Hello, I'm Bo with Windsor, and I'm here today to introduce you to the Sensor XP and the Sensor S line of commercial upright vacuum cleaners. The Sensor XP is available in 12, 15, and 18 inch widths. The Sensor S is available in 12 and 15 inch widths. We're going to start by taking a look at some of the features that are common to both vacuums, and then we'll take a look at some of the differences. So let's get started. The Sensor S and XP are ideal for applications such as hospitality, healthcare, education, for cleaning office buildings, casinos, and cruise ships. Both sensor models come with an onboard crevice tool and an onboard upholstery tool that can be used with your detail wand. The hose from the detail wand can be removed by simply depressing this button and sliding the hose out. You can remove the other end by simply depressing this gray button. And this allows you now to remove any clogs that might occur in this hose by simply running a broom handle through it to push out the clogs. On the base of the sensor vacuums, you'll find a little orange mousetrap door. This door opens up so that you can clean out any clogs that may occur in the vacuum. This is where the airflow goes back and makes a turn and goes north out of the base of the unit into the body. So to clean out clogs, simply reach in, pull out the clog, and the vacuum will be ready to operate. One of the most important things with any vacuum is that your brush is in good working condition. To keep the brush in good working condition, check it regularly. One of the ways you can do that is by taking a credit card or a license and simply running it across the faceplate. As you run the license or your credit card across the faceplate, as long as it hits the bristles in the brush, the brush is in good shape. If you run your license or your credit card across the brush and it does not hit the bristles, it's time for a new brush. On the sensor series of vacuums, it's very easy to change that brush by simply finding this button on the base and depressing it. When you depress this button, this bearing block pops up. You can then remove it, give the brush a slight twist, and it removes with no tools. It's important that you do this every week or every other week, just to remove the debris and the hair that will accumulate on this brush. Once you've removed it, simply put the brush back in, give it a twist to set it back in place, and then depress this button and slide the bearing block back on. On the back of the sensor vacuums, at the neck, you'll find a little orange switch. Now that switch, when it's on the right-hand side of the neck in this position, allows the vacuum to lay flat to floor for flat to floor cleaning under beds and tables and chairs. When switched over to the left side of the neck, that feature stops the neck at this angle and allows you to use it to jump thresholds as you move between buildings or throughout buildings. Which mode is right for you, you'll be able to decide, but just know that this little orange switch allows you to do flat to floor cleaning and jumping of thresholds for transport between buildings. On the base of the sensor S, you'll find two indicator lights, bag full or clog, and check brush. The bag full or clog light will come on when there's a reduction in airflow moving through the system. A reduction in airflow simply means that there is a clog or the bag is legitimately full. This light will come on for about 45 seconds to one minute and then the vacuum will actually shut down completely. When that happens, simply clear the clog, replace the bag, turn the vacuum back on and you're ready to go. Another item you'll find on the base of the Sensor S model is the four position height adjustment dial. Just by turning this dial, it adjusts to four different heights. Keep in mind that the vacuum will not go into that brush position until you lower the body of the vacuum. Now, how do you adjust it? What's the right setting for your carpet? A quick and simple way is to adjust it to position four, which is the highest setting. Turn the vacuum on, drop the body into a vacuuming position, and then adjust down from four to three, three to two, and two to one if necessary, until you hear the brush hit the carpet. Once the brush hits the carpet, your vacuum is properly adjusted. 
Another thing you'll find on the base of the sensor S is this exhaust filter. This is where the air finally makes it out of the system after coming through the bag, across the motor, and then out. This filter needs to be replaced about every six months. Generally tell people as a guideline, Christmas and July 4th. This filter cannot be washed and must be replaced since it's a paper filter. This is just filtering the carbon dust coming off the vacuum motor. On the base of the sensor XP, you'll find four indicator lights. Down, up, check brush, and bag full or clog. One of the most unique features on the sensor XP is that it adjusts height automatically with no user interaction. This is important as you move across floors that are uneven. You'll notice as you vacuum with the sensor XP that the up and down lights will come on intermittently as the vacuum adjusts so that the brush is always in the right contact position with the floor. This allows for maximum efficiency when vacuuming. The check brush light comes on when something gets caught in the brush roll, for example, a cord or maybe a washcloth in a hotel room. Once you remove the item that's been caught in the brush roll, simply turn the vacuum off and then back on again and you're ready to go. The bag full or clog light will come on when there's a reduction in air moving through the system. The reduction in air simply means that there's a clog or the bag is legitimately full. When that happens, the light will come on for about 45 seconds to one minute, and then the vacuum will shut off completely. Turn the vacuum off, clear the clog, replace the bag if necessary, and then turn the vacuum on and you're ready to go. Another thing you'll find at the bottom of the sensor XP is the final filter or exhaust filter. This filter needs replaced about twice a year. Generally, I tell people Christmas and July 4th. This filter simply filters the, the air as it comes out the vacuum off the motor, and most of the particulate is just carbon dust. This filter is a foam filter. It can be washed, although we just recommend replacing it twice a year for your best performance. At the front of your sensor vacuums, you'll find the cover that allows you to access your vacuum bag and your secondary filter. Simply flip this latch up, tilt the cover forward, and you have access to your vacuum bag. To remove the vacuum bag, simply pinch, slide it forward. To replace the vacuum bag, simply line it up, slide, and then click into place. Your secondary filter catches debris that comes through the vacuum bag. To remove the secondary filter, simply put your finger around the bottom of the base, slide it forward. This filter should be replaced twice a year, generally Christmas and July 4th. To replace it, simply flip this silver latch up, slide the secondary filter back into place, and replace the cover. So there you have it. You now know everything that you need to know to safely and effectively operate and maintain your sensor S and X